What up, Vol Nation? Today we are doing the interview with Aaliyah Vassell. I said that right, right? Vassell. Vassell. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, so Aaliyah, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, where are you from? How did you come up in the acting game? Like, just, just tell me a little, little, little bit about yourself. It's, so I am Canadian, uh, born in Canada. My parents are Jamaican. Um, I have lived uh, in a bunch of different places across the US, but I have been in Tennessee for the longest. I was here, I was in the Chattanooga area from ages four to 15. Then when I was 15, I moved to Canada. Ooh. Then I went to undergrad in Birmingham while I was still living in Toronto for the summers. And then um, after I graduated, I just traveled everywhere for work uh, and acting and professional things. And now I'm back for another year. I have been singing, dancing, acting since I was like a little kid. Uh, I started dance classes at four. Um, I was always in like the church productions and all that stuff. Um, I think my first, my first like school show was Cinderella, Cinderella Junior, and I was okay. in first grade, and I was one of the ballroom dancers, and they just put us in these poofy dresses, and we would just like dance together, and it was like me and another girl, and we're just like twirling everywhere, and uh, that I I just kept it up. Um, I didn't realize that it could be uh, a career until. I was eight and we went to New York. We just went back to visit family. Um, and I saw The Lion King on Broadway. And I saw people on the stage that looked like me. And I was like, oh, I can do this too. And so I just kind of like pursued it, pursued it, pursued it. Uh, and then when it comes to high school, I was like, I wanna sing and dance in college. I wanna sing and dance for my career. And then I didn't realize that there was a musical theater track. I didn't realize that you could sing, dance, and act. And I was very green. And going into college, like everyone would be like, oh, fan of the opera. And I would be like, what's that? And so it was just kind of like learning a good uh, mix of it. I remember my first play. It was like in first grade. Yeah. And it was about, like I think, some fish. And the <laughs> only reason I wanted it, there was a, a fish that could rap. And I was like, I'm going to get that part. But my boy Scott, he beat me out for it. And he got it. And, I, you know. Years later, now I rap and I was act. It like Shark Tank? Will I think Smith? It, it was kind of like sh Shark Tale? Yes. Shark Tale. Shark, shark Tale. Tale. I said Shark Tale. For a well yeah. of a wash, you can get a price that's, oh my gosh, I love that movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 What's been one of the most, I, I guess, like iconic moments of your career? Is there like a play that you remember or a certain part that you remember more than others? Yes. Would you like to speak on it? Sure. Um, well, recently, uh, my favorite show that I had done before uh, Detroit 67, which just closed, uh, which is now my favorite show, was um, Sister Act. And I got to play uh, Dolores, Dolores Van Cartier, which is the leading lady um, that was in 2017 uh, for the Charleston Sage Theater Company in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, before that, I had never really had uh, a lead role before. That was my first lead role in um, a big show. Uh, and it was just kind of like life changing. I, I, that was one of my dream roles and to get to play that every night and to get to like live in that character and everything, I was like, this is, this is it. And I want to keep doing it and I want to keep building. And I knew that I, Looking back on it, I knew that I could have done a better job at it, but for where I was in my training at that, that point, that was, I gave my all, I gave the best I could, and now I would love to get a chance to play that role again after coming here for like three years and training more and like realizing things. I was like, oh, okay, so I can sing this way without hurting myself, or I can be big but still be like truthful in my acting, and so um, that was definitely it. And then. Detroit 67, getting to be Bunny. Uh, oh my gosh. Wow, What'd that you... oh, that's so much fun. It was, it was, it was a good time. Um, I hadn't ever been that big on, yes, I was that big in Sister Act, but it wasn't coming from a truthful place. It was more so uh, being a character or what they expected me to be versus like Bunny, 
I went into myself and I was like, this is who I am around my friends. And then I just had to realize that Bunny is around her friends in the safety of her best friend's basement. And she can be as big or as loud as she wants to be. And as soon as she leaves that basement, then she has to put on the mask as black women did uh, in the 1960s, as we still have to do today, you know, for different reasons. But um, that, that was, I think, the best because of the self-discovery uh, I took in finding Bunny for myself. Good answer. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you, you approach these interviews. Um, something I did want to bring about, because we are talking about Detroit 67, which I'm going to honestly say, I may be biased, I don't know, but it's my favorite show that I've ever seen thus far. So, yeah, it, it was good. Um, That's a big thing. I you. know, right? Thank you. I, all the cast members, and I know, like, crew and, like, everybody behind the scenes probably put in hours and hours of yeah. work. Being a minority and mm -hmm. doing a show like Detroit 67, almost like theatrical activism, uh, mm -hmm. how, how do you feel like being in a predominantly white area and doing a play like that do, do you think it has like a, a lasting effect do you think it opens some eyes to the climate that we're living in now mm -hmm. this, this that's that's so hard to answer because yeah. i i'm used to being in white spaces like just being predominantly white spaces but i think to bring that show to campus um i i think the main thing that i wanted people to get from it was that yes this is based in 1967 but a lot of these problems are still going on and are still relevant today. Like we touched on um, police brutality, we touched on uh, racism and prejudice in the workplace, we touched on uh, people not believing in themselves and staying safe because life is worth more than dreams, but um, those are all things that people still go through today. Even uh, here on campus, like yeah, the yeah. whole blackface scandal, the yeah. swastikas on the rock. Like, yeah. No one is truly far yeah. from the events that are covered in that play. Yeah, um, I, I felt very honored to get to do that in such a, such a white space. Um, at the talk back, I, I realized that the majority, the people who stayed for the talk back, one of the things that was said that like really resonated with me was um, a man in the audience was talking about how he can't relate to all of the cultural like colloquialisms and this and that, but he can relate to the characters as fighting for love, fighting for a better job, fighting to keep their family safe. And I think that was one of the biggest things that um, like affected me because I was like, oh, these people are hungry to see stories of people that don't look like them that they can relate to because that is humanity. And uh, I think that is one of the biggest things uh, in Knoxville that needs to be taken into consideration um, is these diverse narratives um, open people's eyes. It's kind of like how people went crazy when they saw Crazy Rich Asians. Um, I still haven't watched it yet. It's fantastic and you need to go watch okay. it. And all I wanted to do was live in Singapore. I wanted to be those people. And I thought that was so cool because I hadn't ever been introduced to um, Asian culture, whether, whether it's Asian American or um, anywhere actually in Asia. I, I was just like, these are, these are people just like me and they have uh, cultural strifes and they have uh, humanity problems, but it's just opening people's eyes to we all like deal with the same things and we all go through things but it, 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 i feel like some people still saw it as kind of like oh they're they're singing and dancing for us you know what i mean but um a lot of people were just like this is different and this is good yeah, yeah. definitely dig that yeah um another question i do have is What's some of the advice that you have for incoming students here at UT or just people in general that really want to get into this acting field or even just musicals and stuff like that? Like, because I'm going to be honest, like coming into it, it can be really daunting, especially mm -hmm. if you don't have the connections or even going up in front of a panel of judges to audition. That, that to me was like terrifying, yeah. especially here at the CBT. So yeah. what are some techniques you uh, advise new artists to approach it like? 
that learn. Was no, no, no. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. Learn as much as you can. Learn everything because in theater, in this big occupation of theater, everyone just wants to be on stage. And I totally get that because that's where I was coming into it. But then going into my undergrad and having to do sound classes, costume classes, design classes, lighting classes, and seeing that there are other um, facets of theater or also the administration side, like to have those other skills and to see how many people it takes to do a show kind of like opens your eyes to what it actually takes to be in this business. So we don't have a lot of time today, but I do got one more question. Well, actually, I got two more questions. One, do you have social media you'd want to plug so people can follow you? Uh, uh, sure. All uh, right, here, here it is. Okay, uh, my Instagram name is simply Aaliyah, simply A-L-E-A-H. Um, this is something that it, I would like to plug. Uh, so Brenda, Oriana, and myself, we are uh, second year MFA actors here at UTK. We are starting, we have a theater company and it's just poor theater. We get together and we read shows as we were just saying. But um, we just made a Facebook page and if you are interested in coming to see free shows over the summer, um, stage readings, or just want to get involved, um, hit us up. It's here, me, Roar, theater company. Um, just like us and keep up with us because we're going to be doing some crazy things over the next year. That's so awesome. Once again, please go check out her Instagram. Mm -hmm. Check out the plays at the CBT, especially if she's oh, in yeah. it. CBT. Uh, obviously, we're here because of CBT. But yeah. Come see Mad Woman. Yo, you got to come see Mad Woman. Mad Woman of Chaillot, CBT. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. I've been like Mad Woman of Chalet. I don't know. Mad Woman of Chai lot. Yeah, you know, that's the crazy thing about names. Sometimes they come out with real, <laughs> real, real weird names. Yeah. Vol Nation, thank you for tuning in. It's wow. your boy. Blah.